am I at right now? Uh, it might not look like I've accomplished a lot, and for the most part, that's true. But what I have got completed is this, this yard ladder and the far yard ladder on the end. Those are pretty much set and ready to go. You can see that I, I have made some changes. At, at one time, I had another switch in here and I had planned on putting in uh, an engine yard in this area. And then I, I got to thinking, you know, I, as, as I looked at it and thought, well, if this is a yard track that will always have, or the potential to always have a train on it, then my engines are always gonna have a blockage if there's anything sitting there. And that's really kind of a bad way of doing things. So it didn't take rocket scientists to figure out that if this is my return track, this, this top one right here, uh, this is my bypass. It's, it's not a staging track. It's, it's actually a way of bypassing the whole yard. If I always go through counterclockwise, I can always back in and back out onto a, a section of track that should never be holding a train. So it made more sense to have three yard tracks here for engines and then another storage yard here. So that, that's what I've decided to go with. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I haven't built all those switches yet because I'm, I'm trying to decide. I've got a number of number eights here going in. I don't know that I need number eights. The one coming off of the main line uh, certainly I think needs to be a number eight, but the rest of these could easily be number sixes and save myself a little space, get a little more uh, length out of that storage yard there. So I, I haven't decided whether I'm going to do that or not yet. I still, at the very least, have four more switches to build in here, plus this one. Uh, now, let me talk just a little bit about the concept of how this is going to work uh, alongside with the electronics. So it, it's going to have an auto reverser. I've got the PSX, I think it's AR1. I, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it's, a, it's an auto reverser that can also automatically flip the throat switch. So the way that's going to work is I'm going to double gap right here, and then I will have another double gap up here right before we start the radius going into uh, the reverse loop. So that will easily fit a train, and there shouldn't be any issues. And then when I hit this up here, it should throw this switch to realign an exit point. Uh, now how that's going to work with LCC is that hopefully that will create an event, you know, and uh, let me back up. Let me, let me try and, and explain how, how this is going to work. There's a total of seven routes that you can take through the staging yard. You can take the bypass track, which is not going through the staging yard. It's going outside the staging yard. Then I got staging track one, two, three, four, five, and six. So if you go through those six staging tracks, you have a total of seven possible routes through the reverse loop as you come through counterclockwise. So the way LCC is gonna work, if I've got seven buttons, seven push buttons, if I push uh, number one, we'll just say route one, takes you through a number of switches that get you to exit on route one. So when I push that push button, it's going to send an event across the network that every one of my uh, tortoises, which are associated with an input or an output, will read that event and align the way they're supposed to, either diverging or non-diverging, and align themselves with the push of one button. So I won't have to push one, two, three, four, five, six buttons to pick a particular route. I will be able to push one button to get one route and so on and so forth. So I should only have seven buttons associated with the seven different routes that you can come through. Uh, that, that's where I'm at on the electronics part of that. So you can kind of understand how I'm going there. I plan on having the storage yard 
completely different. I, I'm, I'm leaning towards not even having that be smart. I may just create a whole nother panel just for it because uh, I don't see a need for it to be smart. But that's where I'm at right now with, with what I'm doing. And I'm gonna get busy probably building some switches because I think that's what I need to do. I wanna do all this at once for the most part. Uh, or, or I may make a decision to only do the east ladder. So uh, stand by and we'll see where I go from here. All right, you're, you're looking at the only thing I accomplished today is this curve turnout here. It was my first one, so I really took my time with it. it took me most of the afternoon. Uh, I had some other things I needed to do today. I winterized the travel trailer, do some yard work. It's uh, that time of the year where I like to have the yard mowed down nice and tight, so I don't have to mess with it again for the rest of the year. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do here I think I'm gonna go ahead and make all of this, you know, permanent, so to speak. In other words, I know exactly where it's gonna go. And I think I'm gonna take all of the track and get it laid nice and neat, uh, making this top track here kind of the, the template for all the others that follow and, and concentrate on working everything from where my plywood splits up here uh, where I've got the eight foot this way and, and concentrate on getting everything where it needs to be on this end of the plywood. Uh, so, you know, it's going to be another weekend before I get anything worth looking at. So, uh, video magic says here in less than a second, you'll see what I did next weekend. All right. So it's been a whole week since the last segment. And of course, in model railroad terms, that means I've had time to change my mind six or seven times on what it is I'm gonna do next. Uh, I mentioned that I was planning on having this area here, uh, my storage yard and my engine yard, not on the LCC network. One of the primary reasons why I considered doing that or am considering doing that is after I mapped out everything else, the ladder down there and the ladder here and this switch, uh, with my two LCC tower LCCs, the, the input and output nodes that's gonna control the staging yard, I ended up with four IOs left over, which wasn't gonna be enough to warrant trying to do anything in here. Uh, but now that I'm, I'm kind of thinking about it and I, this just keeps kind of growing here <laughs> and that's kind of what I'm thinking is I, I might as well do this and get as much out of this as I can while I can. And now would be the time to do it uh, rather than later. And I've got, you know, something up above the staging yard. So if I make this eight tracks, which right now it's nine, which doesn't really make sense, but never mind that. Uh, if I make this eight tracks, then one more tower LCC would control just this area. And again, as, as mentioned before, if you create routes in and out, it kind of helps with derailments, or at least that's the idea in my mind, is that I push one button to get out and then all of the switches align appropriately with that one push of the button. Uh, you know, over here on this, due to user error, I'm constantly maybe going across to switch the wrong way just because I'm not paying attention. And that could happen here even easier uh, as a result of having, you know, multiple switches that you'd have to push to align everything to the direction you're going. So I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and get me another tower LCC and then make this area smart, so to speak. So 
Uh, that's where I'm at right now. Let me uh, let me show you what I got going on with this. Boy, that's a rough life, isn't it? Hey, cat. Cat. My goodness. So here, here's what I got going on. I'm getting ready to make uh, five number six switches. And you can see I've got everything cut. I've got everything filed. Everything's ready to go. Uh, it makes more sense if you're gonna build several switches at once. You might as well do all of the filing, all of the prep work. You know, I've got these filed with the profiles they need to have and I've got the little bins. So I should have, you know, a number right, a right hand, a left hand, a right hand, and then two more right hands. I can't remember exactly, but they're already, they're laid out in the order that I'm gonna make them. Another thing I'll mention, is I purchased this number six tiebreaker jig. They sent me the wrong one. You you put in your ties here and then you cut them and they're all too long for your jig. And I, I'm not 100% sure, but I think they sent me the pockets for a dual gauge tiebreaker. And then the top here, it says that it's a, a number six HO narrow gauge but it's not, it's it's definitely the wrong one. So I'm gonna have to get a hold of Fast Tracks and see if they'll fix that for me. Hopefully they will. Uh, but I've got all the ties already cut, already gapped. I've got them, you know, sanded down to where they'll fit right in there. So now all I'll have to do is start soldering and I'll start with making all of the frogs first. I'll, I'll solder all the frogs up using the, the frog helper and then just back to back to back, make my five turnouts. That's what I'm gonna do next, because I, I wanna make sure that I've got all these built because that makes it just a little bit easier to get this where you want it, because you can kind of move your ladder around as necessary. I think I'm gonna have a little bit of track come out here and bend around uh, before I begin the yard ladder. But I won't know for sure until I get the rest of these uh, turnouts built. So that's what I'm gonna do now, stand by. Getting closer. What I ended up doing was building five number six switches. And I decided to go ahead and keep the number eights. And so I've got one, two, three, four number eights. And then I think I need a fifth one here, a, a left hand turn that will keep this track and that track parallel with each other. And I think, and I haven't completely decided, I may go ahead and build another right hand number five here for a fourth uh, engine yard track. And I, I'm still not 100% sure, because what I'm, you know, all of this is gonna be dependent upon what I do with the electronics. Uh, one more tower LCC would give me 16 inputs. Uh, and I think I've got four inputs left over from the other two tower LCCs that are running everything else, which would give me enough room for another track here. Uh, I'm, and what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna call it quits for the night. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna get out my spreadsheet and just kind of plot out what it would look like with another tower LCC and just kind of leave everything lay. Uh, it took me the better part of two and maybe two and a half days just to get those five switches built. It's very time consuming. I ended up with one left over here. It's a, a left hand that I can't find a place for, but it'll be used later on. All right, I've mentioned a couple of times throughout the previous segments, uh, LCC. And if you're new to the channel, maybe you haven't heard that term and know what it stands for. It's layout command control. And what it is, is it's, it's a way for various components on your model railroad to communicate with each other and act upon the events of each other. 
It's based on a consumer producer model that basically says when something occurs on the railroad, all of your devices know what has occurred and then can act upon them. Uh, a, a producer consumer model is what it's based off of. Based off of. Uh, so I'm going to try and explain how this would work in case that's still confusing. And to be bluntly honest, sometimes it's still really confusing to me. So I'm going to give a couple examples of how this might work given what I'm doing here with my staging yard. So you have a train that wants to leave on engine track four. We'll say this is engine track four. When you push a button that is configured within LCC, it's going to create a unique event. And it's going to broadcast that event. And then all of your turnouts that might be affected by that event will see it and act accordingly. So that that's one way is that, you know, and this is a unique number, we'll just, you know, for the sake of argument, we'll say it throws up the number 10. It's really a 10, 10 or 15 digit number, but it throws the number 10. This turnout, which is associated with an output, will see that and go, okay, I need to switch to diverging. This turnout will go, I see that, number 10, and I need to switch to diverging. So on and so forth, so that all four of these turnouts here will act accordingly. That's one way that that can occur. Another way that is very similar is we'll say, you take a train through here and it hits this piece of track. If this is block detected, that block detection is also associated with an input. And so that will throw its own unique event. And then both of these switches might go, I need to switch to diverging because this is occupied. Okay, that's an another example. Another example would be, and I think this is called a cascade. I'm not entirely sure how this works, but we'll take this switch right here. The output associated with this switch is listening for anything to occur. So you can take the event associated with the state of change with this, whether it's either going diverging or going to normal, whether it's either one of those is still a state of change. So any state of change associated with this switch, because this switch, you know, if there's something coming out of here, it doesn't matter whether it's track one or track two, this switch knows that I need to be normal. Uh, that, that's three examples. I'm not entirely sure. It might be a combination of all of those events that I will need to do uh, to get all this working the way I want to. And of course, the idea is, is that I've got fewer push buttons to align and I can't, or it's going to be more difficult for me to, to screw up having something thrown the wrong direction as I come in and out. So how does all this relate to my decision to do what I'm doing here? Well, the answer is, is that the Tower LCC, which is the, the configuration node that I'm making use of, has 16 lines that can be configured as either inputs or outputs. So by design, and maybe a little serendipity, I've got eight, or excuse me, 16 switches back here. Uh, so that works out perfectly for one Tower LCC and two stall motor drivers because each of the stall motor drivers I'm getting can drive up to eight turnouts. And so that all kind of figures into where am I going to put these things physically so that you can get to the, the wires to where they need to go is associated with the device that, that they need to, to work with. 
So that's where kind of planning these things out in advance comes in handy. This is the first tracker that I created for the Time Saver. Uh, and of course, that was my my first adventure into LCC, just kind of fill things out and figure out if I liked it or not. Uh, you can see I, I went in here and tried to name the blocks. And yes, I have way more detection blocks than I ever needed in that two foot by eight foot uh, module. But you know, it was a learning process. Uh, here you can see I, I named my turnouts. Uh, some of that worked out pretty good. Of course, the idea is, is that if you ever need to go back in for any kind of problems, you can see what you've done. So here's, here's a tower LCC. And then over here, I've got the lines. These are the different lines that can be configured either as input or output. And I did a really poor job of explaining in the description of what these were how they actually work. So you kind of have to, it's an, it's an input, it's connected to a block occupancy, block occupancy detector eight, uh, which is making use of a CT coil. But that's all I really know about it. So this was a good idea and, and there's, there's probably enough information that I can kind of go back in and figure out where the physical wires actually go. Cause that's kind of the point of this is if you have a problem anywhere, especially in the configuration, which, which line is associated with your problem on the layout. So I've got a new tracker here that I've started creating for staging and I've done things a little bit differently. You can see here, I've got some color codes and I've got lines one through eight with a break and then lines nine through 16. And what this, these here represent is the actual physical wire or plug associated with the tower LCC. I've also gone in and I've tried to make the description of what the line is associated with a little more detailed. So line one here, will be control point one, the main line, east throat. So this is the throat switch that you're first gonna encounter as you come in to the staging yard. Hopefully as, as I move forward, this will help me really kind of be able to come back and see if I've got any problems where this is and what it's associated with. I've still got, uh, it's, it's gonna be configured as an output it's connected physically to a stall motor driver eight. And then I've also got, it's connected with a ribbon cable. And this is the first ribbon cable one through four. I'll, I'll try and explain that. So here is the tower LCC and you can see it's got a, a 10 pin connector. And this, this gets so confusing, uh, but I think I finally kind of got it figured out. You can see this triangle right here. This is the representation of your first pin. So your physical wire, this is pin one, and it's your first physical wire. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Your tenth pin and your tenth physical wire will always be line one in the configuration node. And they, they explain that here. If you, if you actually take this plug and create a grid around each of your pins, this is what you're looking at. So you can see here, this is configuration line one on pin 10. <laughs> so that's, you have to keep that in mind as, as you're wiring everything up. That was, you know, the biggest reason why I went in here and created this so that you could actually see, you know, which, which of these, which of these actual physical uh, turnouts, because that's what these are. These are going to be connected to a turnout physically, which pins are going where. 
And then with that knowledge, you can see, well, I don't want anything that's going to the west side of the layout configured on this pin if this pin also, or the connector, if, if this connector also needs to go to the other side of the layout. So those are just things that I'm, I'm considering uh, before I actually begin doing any physical wiring. And, and of course the other part is, is do I actually have enough inputs and outputs to do what I want to do because they're, they're a little on the pricey side. And so you want to make sure that you don't have, you know, four or five left over uh, just to do two more tracks, you know, because if you're going to, if you're going to have 16 inputs and outputs, you probably want to make use of them. So that's kind of where I'm at on, on this. And, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to probably go back and redo all of this. And I think I will probably end up doing this backwards, so to speak. In, a, in other words, once I get all of this physically laid and the tortoises physically put on the, the bottom of the, of the plywood, it will become pretty apparent how I need to make the wiring work. I will need two stall motor driver eights on this end and one on this end, because I've got far fewer turnouts on this end of the layout. So that's kind of where I'm at on this. I've got one more of these switches to, I think of this one right here, I can't remember one of these. I still have to solder up and, and get created, and then I'll be ready to move on to the next step. All right, all the turnouts are now completed. The only thing I have left to do is go in and gap the frogs on the number sixes. And I plan on maybe creating a jig that will serve some multiple purposes. I, I'm not completely sure. I'm just kind of in the beginning phases of the concept. But you can see my number fives, or excuse me, my, my number sixes, there's a lot of space beyond the three ties where you isolate the frog. So I need to put in some cross ties there. I need to do that. And I also want to check the electrical, I don't know, the, the, the electrical <laughs> capabilities and, and how well the trains actually run through. I'd like to do that before I commit to permanently putting them on the layout. So can I create a jig that you pop either a number six or a number eight onto that you connect with a couple of rail joiners and then you find out that, oh yes, indeed, uh, a train runs through it quite nicely or no, it derails every time. So those are things that I'm thinking about doing. I might attempt to do that today, work a little bit on that just with the concept and some drawings and things like that. But other than that, you know, staging is, is ready to go, go into final production as far as the track work goes. I, I do have one more thing to consider, and I'm going to go ahead and ask the question uh, to all of my subscribers and even those who still haven't subscribed for whatever reason. You're free to do what you like. <laughs> but uh, should I cover this whole thing, you know, 16 feet from here all the way to the end. Should I cover it in cork or just leave it bare on the wood? I've gone back and forth on that myself two or three different times. And I think there would be some advantages with the cork for sure, but I just haven't decided because it's gonna be an expense and kind of a, a pain to have to glue in. And especially if I want to make it where it still splits down here in the middle. Just all things I have to, have to think about. So please give me your, uh, your comments on should I use cork or not cork, or if there's another material that, that's every bit as good as cork, uh, let me know. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next installment of Otter Creek in Rio Grande. I haven't mentioned it yet, but one of the reasons why it 
took me so long to get a video up is there were two full weekends I spent taking pictures of the time saver. It looks like I'm gonna be published in the HO Narrow Gauge Annual. Uh, it's been kind of a process. Uh, I got the proofs back from, from the magazine and I've got several pictures that I need to write captions for. I need to do that tonight. So uh, really looking forward to that. If, if you'd have asked me two years ago when I started cutting the, the one by fours for this, that this would ever be in a magazine, I would have laughed at you because I didn't know that I could do this, just, just to be honest. I, I didn't know that, that it would look like that at all. So I'm pretty happy with that. So, uh, you know, keep, keep looking out for that magazine. I'm sure I will update you on when it comes out and that kind of thing. So uh, off to the next project. Never can spend any time